Hey guys and gals, it's me George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man, and I've got a mail call. This is a triple decker mail call. I got an envelope, and then a cylindrical shaped package, and then a, a box. So let's go for the envelope first. This one is from, uh, well, this is from Stan and Ryan Whitehouse from down in Tennessee. And this is, I already opened this one. I haven't opened the other ones yet. Their new sticker for the Redneck Railroad. How's that? That's really cool. Nice sticker. And they sent me a, a, a nice note too personal note so I won't be reading that to you all so thank you Stan and Ryan and uh, I think I'm gonna put this sticker up here in the house um, my door out there is getting filled up and I got space on my cabinet up there so I think that's where that one's gonna go okay let's go to the next one this one is from uh, Eric Polston um, and I have no idea what this is at all. It's fairly weighty. I hope it's not a, a an aerosol can because I just stuck my knife in here to open it up. I hope I'm not cutting something. No, it looks like I'm okay. Try, try cutting just the tape and the first layer of paper. See who's on there. Out on that end and on that end too. Eric's uh, favorite statement that he always makes when he leaves comments is fins up. He's, uh, his dream car is, uh, now let me see, it's an international scout with the rear fenders off of a Pontiac. Um, I have one of his stickers out in my garage actually. And I'm trying to think what year Pontiac it is, but that's where he gets the, the thing of fins up from the Pontiac fins off the back. Okay. Hmm. It's some kind of bottle, and it's got some kind of fuzzy stuff inside the bottle. Okay. So we got a plastic lid on that end. Now maybe I can push it right on through. Let's see what happens here. Kind of like... Uh, coming slow but sure but it's coming well maybe it was coming well, I see some writing on the inside of the paper inside there let's try pushing it out the other way let's see if I can get it out that way now I don't want to turn it to the left because whatever is inside that bottle could come out if I did that and I don't want to cut the paper inside because I can see that there is a note in there. Eric, is this a test? Okay, there it is. And it looks to me, looks like gray flocking. That's what it looks like. See that? Looks like gray flocking. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Well, let me see if I can get the note out of here. Okay. Now we get it opened up here. Oh, now we get the outside. Okay. Oh, this is sand. The sand is from Daytona Beach, and the alligator is for you to put on the Shade Tree Railroad. 
backdrop area or some something you see fit. I'm just saying the pick is from a great day at the beach. There's his sticker, so I've got another one of his stickers. And there's a picture of the beach where the sand came from, I'm assuming. Oh. Now, so there's got to be an alligator inside there somewhere. Oh, I let me let me let me dig. Oh, he's got the lid taped down. Wow. This is really a test. And it's not a glass jar, it's a plastic jar. Okay, now we gotta cut all the way around. And it's got a shaker on it. Hmm. See if I can pop that shaker lid off. Boy, that is really fine sand. Woo! And I just dumped it on my front. Look at that. Dumped it right on my front. Let me see if I can find another container to stick it in. Okay. Well, I've got the lid off of a jar of wax. Let me dump the sand in here. That's nice, fine sand. Aha! And there, buried in the sand, is an alligator. Look at that. Yeah, we will put him on the layout. And we will put the sand on the layout, too. That's really fine sand. That's, I can't believe it. It's, it's almost soft. It's so fine. I've never been to Daytona Beach before. Okay, now let me get my other pocket. I will thank you very much, Eric. That's really cool. Um, it's always good to have some special kind of interest on your layout. You know, something unexpected. And you don't expect to find uh, an alligator in Minnesota or Pennsylvania or wherever the Shade Tree Railroad is. It's not from down south. Okay, so this one is from the Heavy Chevy Clan in Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. This one's pretty heavy too. Look at the size of that puppy. Pretty heavy. I think I know what this is. But I'll wait till I open it. George, aka the Shade Tree Fix It Man. Hope this package finds you well. May it give you warmth as it is so cold there. Yep, he ain't wrong. Although it was pretty decent today. I was out in the garage work and I didn't make any video because I didn't get a whole lot accomplished. Uh, but I'll include what I did get accomplished in the next video. Uh, but I had it up to 40 degrees in my shop today. <sighs> but I was looking ahead to see if maybe by next weekend uh, I would be able to do another test run on the bike because uh, I sold a couple of items on eBay, had enough to uh, purchase a clutch, and so that's ordered. But that won't be here till after Thursday. Uh, enclosed you'll find some interesting items, one being the old railroad spikes which came from the trolley tracks in Charlotte, North Carolina on a section of Brevard Street between 8th and 9th Street. They have been covered up by asphalt for nearly 100 years. Another item is an abstract drawing from Little Miss and an interesting piece of wood drift also from Little Miss. You'll find an envelope. Please use the enclosed content to purchase some propane so you will keep warm 
and be able to work in the shop. Well, I just told you it's going to be getting cold again. Uh, the high is only going to be in the teens for the next few days. Uh, and some random other items. Please enjoy and we'll be watching for your videos. God bless Heavy Chevy Clan. Wow. Abstract. Oh, look at that neat picture. Huh? That's their 55 Chevy pickup and uh, Pontiac Firebird rolling down the road. That'll be going up on the wall in here. There was some grease on some of the stuff in here because it's... Oh. Little Miss Heavy Chevy. Look at that. I'll have to find a place to put that up too. It's got hearts on it. And, well, I don't know, it's got all kinds of different shapes. Thank you, Miss Heavy Chevy. Oh, I wonder if they think I need to change the oil on my vehicle or something. those vintage service stickers Valvoline a whole strip of them that's cool and look at that a belt I'm going to open this up so you can see it better made in the USA oh this is cool this is cool Look at that. It's a belt made like a tape measure. Pretty cool. And it's got measurement on both sides. I wonder how accurate it is. It looks pretty close. Yeah. Very, very nice. I can wear that. Yeah, you'll have to be looking for it in the videos. I'll show it next time I'm out there and I got it on. Very nice. Woohoo! Boy, this is a goodie grab bag. Huh. Looks like Mr. Heavy Chevy was uh, doing some pounding on his leather bag. It made a compound curve out of a piece of metal. Are you sure you didn't need that to use on your uh, floorboards? In the old 46 Ford? That's cool. Well, I'll have to find a place to use that. Look at that. That's a shorty. Still got some of the asphalt on it. This one's a little bit longer, but it's it's still got all the stuff on it. Man, it yeah, you could tell it's been underground for a long time. The whole thing was buried. Very neat. There's two. There's three. These are smaller than the regular railroad uh, spikes. There's four of them off of a trolley track. Reminds me, uh, back in my hometown, they had trolley tracks that ran through the center of town. And uh, they were there well into the 80s um, when they finally decided instead of keep tarring over them they dug them all up and then uh, completely repaved the main street down through town uh, trolleys hadn't been running uh, in my memory but at the four corners in town you could the, because the some uh, not the cement but the asphalt had worn through you could see the tracks going around the corner in both ways coming down Main Street and Center Street intersecting with Main Street. So that was pretty neat. So that's that's a neat thing. Now let me see where am I going to put these. Got a box over here. Oh, I'll just set them back down in this box. And wow, look at that. Is that a cool piece of driftwood? Wow. 
That's very cool. I think I could make that make a pencil holder out of that. That's cool. It's going to find a place on my desk. And then I think that's a piece of coal. There's several of them in here and it got bounced around and got kind of broken up. But that sure looks like anthracite coal to me. And I know a lot about that because when I lived out in western Pennsylvania up in the coal mining region I burned coal for uh, four years. Soft coal, not hard pea coal, but the soft coal. And I even went in, uh, to an abandoned strip mine and had permission from my boss to uh, dig there and I got a, a dump truck full out of there. But pick and shovel work I told my son who helped me that time, I said after this we'll just uh, save up our money and buy a truckload. At that time, and this is back in the very early 90s, you could buy a truckload of that coal delivered for about 25 bucks. But uh, 25 bucks was hard to come by for us. We had three children at home and uh, yeah, we lived below the poverty level. and. Uh, his envelope with something extra and I won't look in there now and here's what I was expecting to see and how cool is that this is a clutch for um, well it's not going to be used on the bicycle but I have another project coming up. For those of you who have been watching for a while, you remember last summer, actually, I had a setup with the motor that's going on the gadget bike now. I had a setup because that was originally on a snowblower and I had a setup with two big lawnmower tires in the back and two little ones in the front and I was sitting there going Burr! and I talked about making a mini rat rod. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be one of my next projects. And I happen to have another five horsepower motor that's it's bigger in size. It's actually a Briggs & Stratton instead of a Tecumseh like the one I have on uh, the bike. That this will go right on there. And we can start making a mini rat rod. How about that? I have one more project in between the bikes, the bike and that mini rat rod though but yeah the, oh excuse me this is great thank you very very much I mean a whole box full of stuff a whole box full of stuff and very different and unique things so thank you heavy Chevy clan to mr. heavy Chevy and mrs. heavy Chevy and two miss heavy Chevy's and little mr. heavy Chevy and to Eric Polston, and to Stan and Ryan Whitehouse. What a great mail call. Thank you all for these wonderful gifts. And uh, what can I say? Thank you. Bye now.